welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back. For one of the most insane Boston Roll videos we're going to see in quite some time. This is a deck submitted by Charlie, someone who I met at Eternal Weekend and was shocked and awed to learn that in the tournament they'd registered Battle of Wits Creative Technique Combo. This is a 239 card deck built with the Creative Technique engine in mind. If you've been watching Legacy at all lately, you know that the Creative Technique deck the way that it works is you just try to get to five mana, then you cast and demonstrate a creative technique, and then it can only hit either another creative technique or a cascade spell that cascades down into creative technique. And then basically you just fire your deck in until you have enough hasty power or you hit an emerald to win the game. This build of the deck is also doing that. But there's a second five drop you can hit, and it's Battle of Wits. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have 200 or more cards in your library, you win the game. Boom. Done. To fill out the deck here, we have just an insane mana base. It has basically every land that taps for two in it. And then it also has the Ravnica Karu cycle, the bounce lands, which I'm honestly a little worried about. These don't actually accelerate you because you have they enter tapped and you have to pick up a land when you play them. They do increase your functional land count when you're mulliganing because you do have to keep a hand with a, a jump off point you do need a, a cascader of some kind to get the party going and on four cards if two of them are golgari rot farm and another land you functionally have three lands in those two cards however you're also massively exposed to wasteland which is already one of the ways that the that kind of normal decks can compete and slow this deck down because you do need to get to five mana before you can do anything. Little push and pull on the Karu lands. I actually wonder if they'd be better served as just dual lands or the charge lands from Time Spiral or something else, but I'm going to rock with them as they are for now. We got the full cycle of Depletion lands, Soul lands, the single color Sack lands, the dual color Sack lands. Masuba can copy them. We're all over the place here. And basically everything that can cascade or discover for five or greater. Unfortunately, this is a deck that suffers from the lack of Warhammer cards on Magic Online. There is a six mana Pyroclasm that has cascade. That should definitely be in this deck, but we just don't have access to that card. Wizards of the Coast, please, please figure it out with Games Workshop and get us these cards online. It seems weird to say, because this deck tech has been very short. And we're looking at 239 cards plus a 15 card sideboard, but there's really not much to say here. We are going to send it, and we're going to hope that Magic Online can keep up. Let's do it. This is Charlie's Battle of Mississippi. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy, and old-school players. They now exclusively offer the Bosch and Roll community free, fully insured, and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets, and out-of-print sealed product. They upload new cards every Wednesday with weekly sale offers and reductions. Use my code BNR0723 to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over 341 euros, approximately $380. Scan the QR code or go to shop3 trading.com I'm on the draw in round one, and here's what I was talking about, where you do need some kind of action spell to keep a hand, and the Karus are good if you're mulling, which I am doing. Ingenuity Engine. Seven is not really where I want to be on my first Cascade spell, but I'm not going to mull a hand that has a plan. I will keep this and put... This is a lot of Bounce Lands. I think I have to send one of the Bounce Lands to the bottom. It's cool that they represent two lands, but all these ETB tapped lands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can get there. Oh, good. My opponent's on a straight rate strategy. 
They usually play discard. How funny would it have been if I had just kept my seven lands and now I'm punished? Have a look. Now I'm going to have to draw out of this anyway. But this is a discard and wasteland deck with a potentially fast clock. I'm going to lay it on Forbidden Orchard because that's my worst land if they want to waste it. But they're going to wait for me to play one of the bounce lands before they fire off a wasteland here. Nothing else makes any sense. Maybe I should have let on Peat Bog then to start sniffing out wastelands. Oh, or Grixis. Architects of Will, what the hell? What are we doing here? Is this Living End? Is that a thing? Wow, I think this is Living End. I have never seen this deck in Legacy, and I'm excited. Bloodbraid Marauder, uh, they do not have Delirium, so this is just a 3-1. This has Cascade if you have Delirium. The old Cascade Mirror, huh? <laughs> Such as it is. Uh, now... I suspect this deck might not actually have Wasteland in it. I will be deploying my Bounce Lands. And maybe they do, maybe they don't. I have no idea. If they waste me here, I'll be pretty bummed out. I'm taking three. And they just didn't have a follow-up play. Heat Bog, get in. I can have five mana next turn if I draw something to do with it. I can put Yorion in my hand. Bell case, just a creature. A four five for five I could play. If that's the case, it probably would have been better to lead on Havenwood Battlegrounds. Because I can get three men out of that without depleting anything. Alright, they're on the six drop or six power beatdown plan. Come on, creative technique. Okay, I just continue drawing kind of stinkers here. Oh, I can carry the peat bog back up. Nice. Okay. Played around it. You're right in my hand. Is it boiler works? Yes, it is. Pick up the peat bog. And I can cast Yorion next turn. <laughs> I have a blocker. It's all going to plan or something. I think I can discard Gemstone Caverns. Not currently helpful. Ooh, Grief Pitching Living End. All right, they found my Yorion. Now if they Living End, I have a 4-5. They do get to Architects the top of my deck, though. But Living End actually is worse than just attacking me for 6 a couple times here. If I draw any 5 or 6 drop in my deck this turn, though... We could reasonably win this game in short order. No, not another one. Now I'm just dead on board. Now I have one turn to do it. It has to be a five drop. Creative technique? Shit. All right. Fine, fine, fine. Three one beat down. <laughs> coast to coast. All right, all right. Okay, so there is a sideboard package to get low versus decks that are lower than you. Throws of Chaos and Violent Outburst can only hit Tybalt's Trickery which can then fire you back up to the chain and start the cascade from lower resources. And I believe this is one where we board this in. Gotta decide what my cuts are. There are 163 lands in my deck. I could just go up spells and cut what I believe to be the worst lands. What are the worst lands? I'm on the play, so Gemstone Cavern can probably chill out. Last zone actually might have won me that game. They didn't have anything else going on other than their bunch of two drops. I can also simply submit 244 cards in a 10 card sideboard. I feel like the math is not that important here to actually board out the same number of cards you board in. All right. Yeah. Cool. Go. <laughs> I am in fact in the throes of chaos. All right. Multiple spells in this hand. I'm going to keep it. I got stuff to do. And look at this combo. I can get an energy off of my Aether Hub. And then pick it up without ever tapping it for mana. And then get another energy. And I'm just charging up my energy. Busted. I think I play the Boros Garrison here. Because... Oh, okay. They probably take Carnosaur. Because if they reanimate... Or no, they would take Protégé. Because if Carnosaur comes into play, I get to discover five, then I win. And they can never... Living End? Uh, this does need a target. Bummer. I would love to be able to discard that in response to a Living End. And then I just win from their spell. There's a Tali. I'm going to float a colorless and play the garrison. Pick up the hub. And if they put a creature into play, I can channel Carnosaur. And then I win if they living end. Just on the spot. I go nuts. See the truth. Okay. This has been cast in just anticipate mode. Look at the top of the cards of your library. Put one in your hand. If this was cast from anywhere other than your hand, you get all the cards. Just a little anticipate. Oh, drawing this peat bog is actually kind of 
rough. Because if I play Peat Bog, I could have five mana next turn. But if I don't play Aether Hub, then I have no chance to channel Carnosaur, which might be my best way to win this game. And I get to six mana on the same turn anyway. Yeah, that that would only matter if I draw exactly Creative Technique off the top of my deck. Cycle to Street Wraith. Blue to Delta. They do not have Delirium. Ball. Target player reveals target. Oh, great. Uh, please discard the Carnosaur. They hit the Emrakul. And a land. All right. These are both sorceries, so is in see the truth. Unfortunately, the Carnosaur did not get discarded. But fortunately, that means I can send the homie next turn. If they don't get something going here. And Itali works the same as Carnosaur from the graveyard. If they play another discard spell, they're not going to be able to living end unless they also play graveyard hate. Architects of Will. They do have... Uh, and yeah, I need a target to do this. Bomber. And now they can grief me and mess up the top of my deck. I guess I could kill one of these creatures. But that doesn't matter because they're going to take the Carnosaur and then I don't have a Tali or a Carnosaur. Okay, what actually happens here? They have 3, 6, 9, 12 damage. If I let them do their thing here, they take Carnosaur because that's the one I can cast next turn. And then they mess with the top of my deck. And then I take 12. Or I make my land drop. Then I take 12. Then I play a Tali. Okay, it is correct not to channel the Carnosaur. It's got to make my way up to big Atali. And I would say if I draw Ancient Tomb or City of Traders, I could just do it now. But they just looked at the top three cards of my deck and arranged them. So that's unlikely to occur. Undiscovered Paradise. That land sucks. I put Yorian in my hand. And then play Azorius Chancery, picking up the Aether Hub. And I do have seven mana for next turn. I need them to not disrupt me in any way. Or apply any more pressure to the board. Or wasteland me. Or do anything. Oh, they cascaded past a Daze. That's fucked up. Luckily, Daze doesn't actually matter against my deck. Because I get the cascade triggers on cast. Okay, moment of truth. Don't grief me. Animate dead targeting my Carnosaur. Uh-oh, they get a spell here. That's so fucked. Incubation incongruity. What the hell does that even do? Look at your cards. Exile target creature. Real creature card. Okay, I don't think I care about this card. Oh no, it hit a grief. I care about this card. Oh, but they didn't have a black card. Okay, I might win here. Okay, I need double red to cast a Tali. Which means the Aether Hub is back in business. All this energy stored up. Oh wait, a Tali does have to resolve shit. I care a lot about these. Uh, this this one doesn't actually cascade. Yeah, if they just daze this, I lose. If this was a cascade spell, I think I would win right here. Let it resolve. Let it resolve. Don't have a spell. Don't do anything. Oh, baby, we're in there. They can't play Stifle, that's for sure. Oh, I hit Battle of Wits? Come on, that's actually the worst one. I needed, like, to go just a little deeper than that. Uh, three... Yeah, I just died a co Oh no, I have two blockers. But they dazed the battle. Coward. Okay. Um, I'm going to Architects of Will targeting myself. And Atali can get Yorion'd successfully. Or no, I'm just dead. Shit. Ugh, I needed to Cascade just a little more. Yeah, if I just hit one big body that hits another big body and then we can hit battle. Yeah, that actually sucks. And 3, 6, 9, block, block, still dead. Okay, the Battle of Wits actually killed me that game, which is really funny. I mean, it's a it's a coin flip whether you just... Or no, it was not a coin flip because that was a tally. Uh, it was a 4 out of this many, just literally all cards. Yeah, that was a insane run bad on that one flip from a tally. But, I mean... Battle of Wits is part of the deck. Uh, usually you want to find it a couple triggers down where you could hold the fort for a turn. Tough beats. On to the next round. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is available exclusively through Coalesce Apparel. This magic player owned business is a staple of our community. They keep this channel on the air, and it's my pleasure to partner with them for this product. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market. They have awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll to get 10% off your order. Only at coalesceapparel.shop. I'm on the drawn round two with a handful of spells. 
I'm going to keep this and trust that my deck will produce lands at some point. There's way more lands than there are spells in the deck. This thing costs nine. Yikes. Affinity for artifacts. I play almost none of those. Oh, the Ingenuity Engine will actually meaningfully make this cost less. All right, let's see what's going on over there. A wild growth. Looks like some Enchantress. I mean, of all decks we could play against, Enchantress is the type of thing that might let us get a Cascade going. I go the Enchantress and pass. Sandstone Needle. Let's go. I was going to auto wire my double land, but now I have a different one. Tick tock. Here we go. We're working up the curve. This is going to be a turn four goldfish. Caracas. That does slow down Emrakul, but hopefully I'll have so much stuff happening by the time I Emrakul that it doesn't matter. If you hit Battle of Wits and Emrakul in the same chain, you get to go straight to your upkeep and trigger battle. Destiny Spinner, Sithis. All right, they're going to draw millions of cards. But unless they play a Blood Moon, they're not going to be able to disrupt my mana, which is the only resource I care about. The Curry Woodlot. Okay. Now I just have all my colors in the bank, and I'm ready to pop next turn. Another Spinner. That draws two cards and gains a life. This is the most F6 value I ever get out of playing Legacy. Sterling Grove. Their other enchantments can't be targeted. They still can, though. All right, deck. It's time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I play Sweet Gum Recluse, that does give me the 50 50 to hit Battle of Wits or Creative Technique. If I go up to a Tali, I could hit basically anything, and I get a peek at their deck, but it costs me my Valenite Temple. And they can tutor with Sterling Grove. So if they just play like a, an Oblivion Ring, then. My Battle of Wits will not win the game. I think I have to go for a Tali here. Okay, here's a Tali. We're going big. This is a legend, unfortunately. A bounceable legend. I didn't think about that. Hopefully it doesn't matter. I hit Wild Growth. That is Enchant Land. Yeah, Enchant Land, not Enchant Forest. Uh, that's kind of sick. Put that on my forest, or on my island. And then I get to Cascade again. It's Sakashima's protege, who cascades into Battle of Wits. We're in there. And if they bounce Itali, I can copy Battle of Wits with protege. If they don't, I'll copy Itali, and then I go again. Legend rule. I'll keep this one. We're going again. Missed me on the Caracas. Enchantress's presence. <laughs> I'm going to guess some number of enchantments this turn. Another Battle of Wits, unfortunately, shows up after the Enchantress's Presence, because that's how cards work. And I will pass the turn and hope that I've won. 223 cards left in my deck. They can tutor for something. They didn't tutor, they didn't bounce, they just didn't use Caracas at all. Or their mana that it could make. Where were you for the Great Battle of the Mississippi River? Enchantress is a tricky deck. They could find a way out of this, but... The wild growth actually rules. All right, Anthan Ice can exile a creature. Yeah, okay. Taking the Sakashima's protege. Another Anthan Ice. They, if they have a Sarah Sanctum, they might be able to get enough mana to activate some lands and bash, but they'll have to tap some of these lands at some point. Wild growth, okay. They're drawing cards, gaining life, spinning their wheels. Yeah, Sarah Sanctum could actually overcome me here. No, it couldn't. What am I saying? Target land you control. Yeah, they would have to tap the Sarah Sanctum to get the million white floating. And then they'd have to tap the forest to activate the green, and then they'd have no untapped lands. They have an Enchantress's Presence that's going to draw more cards. They do have the Sarah Sanctum. This makes a ton of white. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's not close to their own Emrakul, which is a thing that might keep up here. Ossification, exile target creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. All right. They can currently attack me for five. Okay, they got to find 15 more damage here. All right, they're just casting on thin ices to draw more cards. If they find two Oblivion Rings, we can play another turn. I'll just fire the Sweet Grum Recluse and see what happens. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mississippi. We did it. All right. I feel like it's almost correct. No, against this deck. I was about to say I feel like it's almost correct to just have the throws trickery package in the main, but that does dilute the overall combo if you're... Yeah, okay. My opponent is not actually disrupting me in ways that I think are important. They're going to have stuff like, I don't know, Deafening Silence? Like, what are they going to do? Yeah, I think I just hit Submit on my main deck again and go back in. Uh, I just have to develop 5 to 7 mana and cast a spell here, and I will try to do that. Okay, no spell. That is the deal breaker on a keepable hand for me. They could have Blood Moon post board. They could have Choke post board, though very few of my lands are actually islands. It's like one or two. I have a basic island and a snow island. Mulligan, Sakashima's protege, good enough. Keep it. I cannot turn three this. It would have to be turn four. Keep and bottom. I think the Rainbow Veil. Vale. This is the worst land in my hand, possibly in my deck. They've got a Utopia Sprawl. Runes of Trocare. I think Sulfur Vent is the best one to get into play right now. That's one of the ones that taps for normal mana, and then also can sack for two mana. The Runes of Trocare is the other one. The Woodlot, if I do anything with it, it loses a counter. Argothian Enchantress. They're doing what their deck's supposed to do. Will it be good enough? Ancient Spring. Okay. Um, That is two mana. It is a face-up blue for this Ottawara. I already have a red and an untapped land for next turn if I do just spike a creative technique. The four out of 231 odds. But you got a plan, just in case. Sarah Sanctum, good for one right now. I suppose Mindbreak Trap is a powerful sideboard card against me, because at some point, everything that I've done is going to be on the stack. Though, if I get some Cascade creatures up the middle, or some double Cascaders like Apex Devastator or Maelstrom Water, that's how I beat Mindbreak Trap. The boarding party, hello. There you are. I'm going to play a Hickory Woodlot, because that makes two without sacking, which suddenly became a priority. Okay, I'm ready to fire next turn. They're popping Sterling Grove. Probably going to tutor for some hate piece. Rest in peace, does that do anything? Did I show them a single thing that cared about the graveyard last game? That's really interesting. Oh, did they pivot on to Helm combo? Is that how they're going to beat me? Weird. Uh, I am extremely curious about this rest in peace now. Got three cards in their hand. Okay. Uh, they do have a helm. Now I have what's actually an interesting decision. No, it's not. I was about to say I could just hold up Ottawara and bounce the rest in peace in response to the helm activation, but I don't want them to have any of my creatures either. My creatures are really good. Enigma Sphinx. What are the additional words on this? I know it cascades, but... Because I can cast a 6 or a 7 here. Okay, the rest in peace actually does shut this down. Uh, when it enter, when it is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, put it into the library third from the top. Hilarious. Can I cast the Sphinx? White, black, blue, red. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I actually think the Sphinx is right, because going up the chain and getting extra cascades, extra spells, because I actually lose to the 50-50 flip on... Battle of Wits here. Yeah, I'm going to try to go up the chain and just send it on Big Sphinxy. Boom. 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 All right, here we go. Enigma Sphinx. Don't hit Battle of Wits on the first hit. I would love to battle into Emrakul here and just do it all at once. Sweet Gum Recluse. Give me a creative technique. 50-50. No! God, this Battle of Wits is such a tilt. And it won me last game, but... Unfortunate. Maybe you're supposed to play like two Battle of Wits so you create a technique more often. Yeah, now I'm just dead. Okay. Bomber. Okay. I could sideboard that actually and like go down to three of these and that way I hit technique more often and then I have a higher chance of hitting Emrakul, who is actually really important here. Then what do I sideboard in? Uh, Chimil the Inner Sun is awkward because it doesn't discover till the end step. But I guess if I cast this somewhere in the middle of my chain, then go to my end step and start firing creative techniques, I'll end up back at Emrakul eventually. But that's not guaranteed. 
And you can board in extra cards, but you can't board out extra cards. Because the rules of magic are your sideboard has to be 15 or fewer cards. Definitely don't want my chain to end on a Teferi. I am on the draw. Oh, I'm, I'm looking for cards to bring in, not cards to cut. Maybe I just want these Chimmel the Inner Sons rather than more Battle of Wits. So if I do this early, I mean, like, that would have won the game if they hadn't presented their own combo in that order. Okay, I'll do this. I'll split the Battle of Wits so we're actually twice as likely to creative technique than we are to battle. Then we'll still end up in a battle eventually off the chain, but it's really important to hit the first technique, actually. Okay, I'm going in. Okay, I have mana and spells to cast. That's the bar I need to clear. Does the mana make double blue? It does. Okay, keep. Opponent mode to six. I'm going to play the woodlot green. It, there's more green cards than black ones in my deck. I don't think there are actually any black cards. Is that Sphinx is Esper. Utopia Sprawl. Named white, as you do. Rural Turf. I don't think that's where I want to be. Does it matter? Is the question. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's turn four. If I bounce this, that's one, two. Now, bouncing a two mana land to play a two mana land is actually just bad. So, okay. A lot of weird stuff you have to think about with this deck that you don't have to think about any other time. They've got a Savannah. They've had the one drop into Enchantress start both games so far. Okay, this could be Enchantress's presence. Or it could be dead next turn. Shit. Uh, well, I do have an Ottawara, and I have to play an untapped blue source anyway, so this does not actually change anything. What this would mess up for me is if they play their Helm and pass the turn and just wait for me to do something. And if they just, if they play Helm and activate it immediately, I could break it up and get in there. Five men in the pool. Uh oh. They left the mana floating, so they are going to try to fire it now, which means I could break it up. Saying there's a chance. Bang. Bounce that rest in peace. They mill me for one. I hope it doesn't hit Ember Cool. And then I get to untap and send a protege. All right, they milled an Aether Hub, which means they can win next turn off that rest in peace, but I get to fire a shot before then. Come on, sideboard plan. Okay. Blue. Blue. Dead. Dead. Protégé. Do not hit a battle. Let me demonstrate. Let me creative technique. Let's do it. I had a battle. Come on! Ugh. Hate my life. This sucks. God damn it. Uh, I boarded the, some of those out. Uh, oh. I can copy battle, I guess. Which does not matter. Ugh. I mean, it was 50-50 in the previous game, and I made it 66-33 uh, in this game. And, uh, like, if they just did not present their combo so quickly. God damn. All right. The Battle of Wits is the meme, and it is a fun thing, but I think it actively makes the deck worse. We could even add 250 cards to Mississippi River, and if we keep the Cascade stuff and end up on, like, a Lethal Haste Force or Emrakul more often... It might still be better than having any number of battle wits in the deck. Uh, on to the next round. We're still having fun. We did get one battle wits win when my opponent was not shoving a combo down our throats. You come here to level up at Magic. To level up as a software engineer, check out the YouTube series Dev Better, hosted by the founder of Seven Factor Software and Magic player, Jeremy Duvall. You can also find Jeremy co-hosting episodes 106 and 109 of the Tech Talk series with Keith Shaw on the Tech Talk YouTube channel. Head over to Tech Talk and don't forget to subscribe to Seven Factors YouTube channel for every episode of Dev Better. I'm on the play in round three. I have no spell to cast. I'm going to mulligan. I have a spell to cast. Uh, my mana does not make this spell. How important is that? Normally, obviously, like your, your mana has to do stuff, but am I more likely to find a functional hand on five or find a two sources of red before I need it? I am actually going to keep this against medical advice. But it does have weirdly stable mana, given what the deck's trying to do. I'm going to bottom this basic island. Basics are for cowards. Irrigation ditch and pass the turn. This can sack to channel Beseju in an emergency on turn two. That's why I let on that one. None of them tap for green normally. 
other than the Beseju itself, which is my only piece of interaction. An Ancient Tomb. Okay. Ancient Tomb strategies usually have targets for Beseju in them. I'd love to draw a five-color land right now, uh, like Mana Confluence or City of Brass would be the nuts. Then I can Beseju without losing a land drop while working towards Aura Phoenix. Okay, uh, I'll play my Zvalanite Temple. Okay. Draw a second double red spell instead of a red source. God, if they are kind of a mirror in me, I'm going to be so mad. That card's not beatable by anyone ever. It looks like an initiative idiot. Oh, fourth air lingus. Sure. You're just attacking for four and drawing an extra card each turn? Whatever. Can I draw a sandstone needle, please? If I draw that, I can actually just win next turn. And we can be free of this prison. Is it Boilerworks? Uh, technically a step in the right direction, though bouncing tap lands doesn't feel good, but it also bounces a two mana land. But it's not like I'm doing anything else. Boilerworks, pick up this Valenite Temple, please. Yeah, super bummer that Irrigation Ditch is Bant and not Naya. I'm not going to complain about drawing something that moves my, my plan forward at all, though. They usually don't main deck Blood Moon. They frequently do main deck Arkan of Amiria, though. I don't care about Chalice of the Void or any such thing. Come on, deck. Red source. Red source. Even a tapped one's fine. Maelstrom Colossus. That costs eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can send that next turn. Okay. So Valenite Temple, get in. And might as well put your in on my hand, I guess. All right. Fingers crossed. We suddenly have a game plan. Don't fuck me up too hard. Cavern of Souls. Don't name Archon. Do not name Archon. Human? Okay. I'm at eight. And they just went to their end step. Let's frickin' go. City of Traders. I even get to keep a land now? But, like, barely. Uh, I mean, it will technically be in play for a turn cycle. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight. I get to keep the boiler works. That one doesn't have to sack. And if I do, try to send it again. There's no universe where I send it again. Basically, I can place Crystal Vane and sack it right now, or place City of Traders and sack it next time I make a land drop. I don't think that matters. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Easy game, Maelstrom. Colossus, let's gum up this board and end on a battle. But the, op the important thing is gumming up the board first. Just hit a battle, it's instantly. Only revealed one card, even. Just <laughs> deeply fucked. Okay, well, I mean... If they can't inflict 8 damage to me, we'll win the game. And if they have to solitude my 7-7, seven, seven, that's not a great spot to be. That's really funny, Battle, which was literally the second card out of all these lands in my deck. 150 lands in my deck. Okay, don't kill me, please. Solitude's fine, because I gained 7. Okay. 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 Tell me more. My 15. They have 7 damage on board. They can 4th Air Lingus for 3 horses, that's 6. Uh, that. And if they have a second 4th Air Lingus, they're going to win. If they don't, I'm going to win. Uh, Lauren of the Third Path, I guess, would also mess me up. They have a lot of ways to mess me up, is what I'm saying. But also, there's a good chance that their 7 cards in hand don't do anything here. Ho 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 ho! Why even show up, opponent? God. I think this is definitely a matchup where I need to get low. And... In Archon of Amiria is a complete beating. Teferi technically bounces it, but I would have to draw and cast Teferi without cascading into him, and he would fuck up a cascade chain if I don't get there on my own. I am on the draw, so I like the caverns. I think Golgari Rot Farm is one of the worst Karus in the deck. In green matters, but black doesn't. And just play the old 244 special. <laughs> I think it's fine. Uh, Chimmel the Inner Sun is interesting because this can overwhelm a Archon over time. Like if I just play this, pass, discover, put the card in my hand, pass, and then I discover like once per turn. But discover five can only hit battle or a technique. And technique's a brick under Archon. Battle is exactly what I want though. I can also counter the Archon with Tibalt's Trickery. It's just in my hand. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Let's go. Everything is made up, and the theory doesn't matter. 
I do have a spell to cast, and it's one that I can cast under Blood Moon. I can actually besage you on turn two without losing a land. Okay, I mean, it doesn't get better than this, but now that they know what we're up to, they could keep a hand that messes me up. Tinder Farm. Let's try to get the besage you in a position where it could be helpful. Chrome Mox. Pitching Archon. Oh, that means they have two of those, right? That's the best card. You wouldn't just pitch that. Fascinating. I would literally have pitched it the other way. I cannot beat Archon of Amiria, and it's not actually close. Rule Turf. I could hold up this Besaju. I think it's more important to develop the double lands. And then I can Besaju next turn. Because I have a 6 I can send if we get there. Alright, yeah, I'm holding down Besaju. I'm not playing Boiler Works, because if they Blood Moon me, that's just Stone Rain on top of everything else. I still think they have a second Archon in hand, because pitching that is just so insane. It's deeply preposterous. Discarded Comet Stellar Pub. Okay, good call. But they kept one of their extra cards, or they kept three of the cards. That means they like most of their hand. And Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Okay, that's not an Archon of Amiria. I can overpower anything that doesn't stop my Cascade Chain. Uh, these don't make double red between them on the stack. I am holding up a Seiju now. Secret Engines found a Plains, which they played. Lotus Petal. And passing the turn. Okay. Remote Farm. That gets me up to six mana next turn. And I can still besage you this turn. White, white. Yeah, okay. Remote Farm, pass. They're representing five, six, seven, eight, nine damage on board right now. And I can destroy the Fable or the Chrome Mox. I don't think I'm going to do either of those things. Forging on to Goblin. If they've been sandbagging that second Archon up to this point, that could be pretty clever. If they have done the math to figure out when I could reasonably go off. Okay, 9 damage coming in. They get to flip a card. Flip. Come on! <laughs> they just RNG'd their way into an Archon of Amiria off the top of the deck after pitching one. They had the game locked up on turn 2, decided not to do it, and then just... <laughs> there's one. I'm having fun. Maybe they won't cast it. Human spell, mana, in the tank. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, still, if they find a mana source here, they can cast the Archon. But if they're just going to try to put me to four and, and pass, I mean, please don't have a land here. Fingers are crossed. Don't do it. Don't do it to me. Wow, they've declined again. Um, I have to besage you the Reflection. Just in case they get a turn, my life is better without that card around. All right, I mean, let's try to actually hit a creative technique this time and not a battle of wits while we're dead on board. If I can technique into a bunch of creatures or an Emrakul, I actually win here. Okay, white, white, blue, green. I need a black in here to go Sphinxing, and I would like to Sphinx. Okay. White, white, blue, green. Yeah, Forbidden Orchard makes black. All right, time to send it. Black. You can have your creature. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's oh oh that's the depletion one. Okay, I was like, oh no, Moto didn't let me sack it. But I don't have to. Bang. Don't show me battle of what's on the first reveal. Alright, Ethereum, Horn, Sorcerer. 50-50 now. Can I get a creative technique one time in this league? Nope, absolutely not. Alright, well, I'm dead. Alright, alright. I have to cut the battle of wits, at least down to one, because I'm going to be under the gun, and at least techniquing over the top. Man, I like that that's in the deck, but also just losing every coin flip, even the weighted ones so far, has been pretty tough. To be fair, we were playing that whole game on borrowed time anyway. If my opponent had just turned to an Archon of Emeria, we would have been dead. If my opponent had simply cast the second Archon of Emeria that their deck provided for them after deleting the first, we would have been dead. Wow, a mana screw hand. This is the opposite of what we've seen historically. Uh, I can't keep a hand that doesn't have a second land. I will mulligan this. Here we go. Cooking with gas. I will keep this and put Maelstrom Colossus as the most expensive spell onto the bottom of the deck. And this looks like a... It's currently a turn four sorcerer. If I draw a double land, it could be turn three. Chrome Mox. Exile Archon of Amir again. Solitude. Another Chrome Mox. 
Exiling Comet. Lotus Petal. Okay. It's just an initiative creature. Come on, double land. Double land. Not like that. Okay. Uh, this double land does not actually advance my game state at all. I'm going to play the Crystal Vein because I could draw another Crystal Vein, an Ancient Tomb, or a City of Traitors. And those would all do exactly what I need because Sulfur Vent sacks for exactly the colors of Ethereum Horn Sorcerer. I haven't done the math yet. Am I dead just to this? So they 7 me. I'm at 13. And then they 12 me next turn. If they can find one more damage, I actually just lose here. They flipped a second Caves of Chaos Adventurer. And I know they have the mana for it. Great. Ah, all right. Can I draw an Ancient Tomb and have a chance here? There's the mountain. They're going to cast the other Caves of Chaos Adventurer. I'm going to go to 8, and I'm dead on board. I have to draw an untapped 2 mana land right here. Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb. Everyone send good vibes on the Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb. City of Traitors. Crystal Vein. Crystal Vein. Please, deck. The sage, you shit. All right, we're just dead. Uh, I had a turn four here, but they killed me turn three on the draw. Okay. All righty, folks. Uh, I mean, we're playing Legacy with a 250 card deck with no functional interaction below six mana. So, I mean, this is going to happen sometimes. <laughs> There's a reason not everyone's doing this. And once again, uh, losing a game because we hit Battle Blitz instead of Creative Technique. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the draw with a boarding party hand. Goblin Welder. Okay. Mox Opal. Okay. Well, I can't lose to Painter because I have Emrakuls in my deck. Uh, Dwarven Ruins taps for mana... Sandstone Needle doesn't die when I use it once, though. I think I'm actually going to go with Havenwood Battleground, because that one use, plays or uh, sends the Basaju if I draw it. Opponent is starting to understand what's going on in the chat. They said, wait, are there 231 cards in your library? <laughs> there are. There are indeed. Good luck grindstoning me. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Nox Opal still not on. Only one artifact in play. Getting their Goblin Welder beats in. Maelstrom Colossus. Okay. It's time for Sandstone Needle. Painter decks usually don't main deck moon effects. Discarded two mountains to this fable. The full value. Looty doo. Shaman Token will make one artifact. If they can come up with another one, the Opal's on. Luckily, these beats are pretty modest at the moment. If I draw a Tomb City Vein, I can send it right now. Another Fable, setting up their Splinter Twin situation for turn after next. Their Saga eats their city. Grindstone, uh-oh. Draw for turn. Itali, interesting. I guess I play the Sulfur Vent here and pass the turn. In does Blast Zone do anything? I am not willing to sacrifice a land on this board, no. Okay. I'm going to play Sulfur Vent now. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Yeah, I can Atali next turn if the boarding party doesn't get it done for me. I can boarding party and keep one of my sack lands. That might be. But once again, Itali can hit a seven and it can hit get a, get a card off their deck. Both of which are tempting to me. I hope they just try to painter me this turn and I get to shrug it off, untap and win. Though painter painting everything blue could counter Itali which I'm not really interested in. There's two cards in their hand. The Goblin Welder has attacked every turn it's in play. Generally a sign that their game plan's not going well. Ancient Tomb. One card left in hand. Rhea's Apprentice. Okay, we're going to get to send it. And once again, to the surprise of no one, Battle of Wits leaves me dead on board, but if I hit a river, I get to party. 
I think I have to Atali here. Just sack my lands and, and do it. I could get something out of their deck that's useful. Atali's way bigger than Boarding Party. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is there. It can be done. Not getting another turn anyway. Itali. Please, deck. Can I see creative technique for the first time in the league? Oh, I'll take Emrakul. <laughs> Bang. I also revealed, I think, zero cards. That was just, here's Emrakul right on top of my deck. <laughs> Should I lie and say that's a 100% to happen? Um... I mean, they have not lost this game. They have a lot of permanents. Though, blowing Blast Zone would kill two of them before combat. Interesting. I have to actually math this out in a way that I don't want to. Oh, they're doing something. Wait, yeah, please use some treasures. They used a treasure to make a construct. That ends up being the same permanents in play. How do I win? Is it possible to do? Oh, I can weld their stuff around. If I Blast Zone, they lose Grindstone and Goblin Welder. And then I can weld their Construct back into Grindstone. Is that even good? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I have to deal three to them. Oh, that is good, actually. Uh, so, yeah, uh, the Itali Trample, I think, actually gets me over the edge here. Oh, but if I do that, my Goblin Welder's gone. All right. I'm going to attack first and see what they sacrifice. And leave the welder back. If they sacrifice the grindstone or the opal here, I can win for sure. Oh wait, they can block with Thopter. Okay. There's no guarantees here. I actually am just like certainly dead. Okay. Yeah, that's just too many permanents. And I didn't hit Battle of Wits. I'll take that. Not going to complain. It's deeply fucked that they just don't even have to block Atali. They could just jump Emrakul with Thopter and then easily win on their turn. Though, if they do go too far down... Okay, they did not have to block that Atali, but they did. And now they can, like, copy Brea's Apprentice. I think I just make my land drop and continue the, the pummeling here. So I can block with Goblin Welder. I'm at 11. If Emrakul gets a second crack here, I mean, Brea's Apprentice, target creature gets plus 2, plus 0. Oh, that's, that's not nothing. Copying the Brea's Apprentice, there are no in artifacts in their graveyard. Okay. And I'm, I'm clinging to life here. They're in for six. Making a treasure. If I go to five, is it better for me to have Goblin Welder around or two extra life here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight permanents. If I attack next turn, they'll have Apprentice. Reflection, Shaman, that's three. Grindstone, Opal, three treasures, that's seven. Oh no, that's that's eight. Uh, plus the Thopter. I think I just take it here. Yeah, damage is done. Is this? Oh yeah, this welder is active because I time walked. Okay. Then they have to sacrifice the Brea's Apprentice. And then, okay. They have nine permanents. I think I attack first. And if they put an artifact in the graveyard and kill the Thopter, should I boarding party first? Oh, that is haste. Yeah, definitely and obviously, yes. Blast zone. Okay. Boarding party. Let's party. Can I get a creative technique? I got a battle of wits. <laughs> this extra six damage matters a lot, though. Okay, now I just need them to sack one artifact, and one, two, three, four, five. They actually can't not do that. Well, flipping the Thopter into Bray's Apprentice doesn't help. They actually... Okay, they made all the right decisions here, because they know how Goblin Welder works. But unfortunately, I have lethal. Wow, what a crazy game. The old win with combat when you have battle wits on the board strategy. Oh, baby. I think I would like to get low here, especially since there's a good chance they'll try to moon me. Golgari Rot Farm does channel the Seiju by itself, but it's also highly susceptible to Blood Moon. All the bounce lands are. Yeah, just double checking everything. 
Yep, sure. And submitting another 10 card sideboard. Sideboard plan. Oh, I forgot to sideboard out three of my battle wits. I just think that's correct to do in the deck. Just I think that is how the deck should be built, actually. My hand is actually improved if it gets Blood Moon, so I'm going to keep it. I want to mold to five. They saw Emrakul, so they know they can't grindstone me. But they're going to do it anyway. If they have a Graveyard Hate to back this up, they could mill my whole deck and then Soul Guide Lantern or Tormod Script me on the way out, like in response to the triggers, the Emrakul triggers. And Grindstone is a single ability, so it's not like each Emrakul will trigger individually as they hit it. The whole deck goes to the graveyard, and then they do other stuff. Okay. He started like that, then stopped. Is this Mind Break Trap? What, what would do this? But oh, this Geothermal Crevice is kind of the nuts. It is a red source that lets me pop Crystal Vein to keep Havenwood Battleground and the, and the Crevice next turn to send a Throws of Chaos. Throws of Chaos can only hit Tribalt Trickery, and then Trickery counters the Throws, and then it, well, it has to just hit a different card in your deck. And that's how that combo works. I think it's better to send it. Like, they clearly are doing something over here. They kept this hand on the strength of something. Like, I could just play Blast Zone and then Crystal Vein and play Throws next turn. And then play Throws every time I draw a land after that. I just talk myself into it. I'm just going to play Blast Zone and pass. I also just have a Trickery in my hand so I could counter the first spell they play, if I care about it. There's a Saga. I'm glad that showed up on turn 4 instead of turn 2. That would have been real pressure. Ensnaring Bridge. I don't really want that card to happen. My deck does need... To attack. Well, Battle of Wits beats that. I'm going to counter this. So they mill one, two, or three cards at random. <laughs> we got the god in the chat. Yeah, that's right. Um, they can Pyroblast right now if they want. Cool. Just hit an uncastable spell. Everything's coming up to bolt. And now I can Throws of Chaos without losing a single stable mana source. This is insane. All right, only one thing that can be hit here. Trickery, targeting throws. Throws hit Ingenuity Engine, and now I cascade down from seven. Hit a Meteoric Mace. All right, 50-50 to... Or no, it's actually favored that I hit Battle here because I'm already holding. Oh, right, right. I have all these other shits in my deck now. I might have to go back into... Or I will have to go back into the Trickery. It's just getting crazy now. Trickery, counter, violent outburst. Uh, I could counter mace, because there's only one outburst in my deck, and trickery has to hit a card with a different name if I don't want to mace. But mace is fine. Yeah, violent outburst. All right, Carnosaur. This is a creature on the board. It resolves and then discovers. Creative technique. Here we go. Don't sweat it. Uh, I don't need to demonstrate against this deck. But I will, because I'm here to have a good time. They get to cast a card at random from the top of their deck. They got a Goblin Welder. Uh, that's actually kind of a tilt, because there's a uh, Snaring Bridge in their graveyard. All right, Sakashima's Protégé can be a Goblin Welder, and I can answer their bridge with my Goblin Welder. So we're good here. Battle of Wits, I don't care about Snaring Bridge anymore. And Protégé can be a copy of Battle. Yeah, I actually think that's better. Like, they have to double Pyroblast me to not die. It could have been a Carnosaur and kept the party going, but the party's still going, actually. Sweet Gum Recluse. Third Battle of Wits. Can you beat three of these? You don't have enough red sources to Pyro Blast all of them. <laughs> Alright, Sweet Gum's going to put some plus one counters on my creatures. Yeah, the most messed up part of this is they're also dying to damage if they don't Ensnaring Bridge. But they're dying to battle if they do. And I can send it again next turn. There's one more Tibalt Trickery in my deck. And I can retrace the Throws of Chaos. Moment of truth. What do we got here? Do we have a win on the board, please? Painter's Servant is here. It resolves. I don't think I care about this. Even if they go Ancient Tomb Lotus Petal, I don't see any graveyard hate around. We got the GG. What a special occasion. A win on the board. And it was helped by the fact that we actually got the creative technique. On to the final round. If you're looking to run a CEDH or 1v1 tournament, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With Command Tower's intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle deckless submission and player management with just a few clicks. 
Players just need to scan the event's QR code for access to the full tournament bracket, including seamless pairings and real-time standing updates. Take the guesswork out of tournament organizing. Try Command Tower for your next event. I'm on the play in the final round. I have spells to cast and I have three mana. Do I trust the deck to deliver lands? I'm going to try it. The Emrakul in hand is kind of a brick, but having two of the red sixes, these are the ones that jump it off the best, other than the having a technique directly. I'm going to play Undiscovered Paradise. Perfectly normal magic. My opponent queuing into a Yorian Companion 232 card deck with that leads on Undiscovered Paradise. I hope we go this whole league without facing a Wasteland. That would make my life a lot easier. Ancient Tomb. Okay. What are you doing with that? Chrome Mox. Please don't Arkan of Amiri me. I do have the answer to Arkan of Amiri in my hand, though it will cost me all of my lands to use it. <laughs> I would have to tap Undiscovered Paradise, which bounces after you use it in the, your next untap step, and set Crystal Vein to channel the Carnosaur. I almost welcome the sweet release of a Blood Moon here. Rabble Master, okay. They're just going to try to kill me. Reasonable, I guess. Can I draw a two-mana land and possibly get ahead of what they're doing here? Those are the questions I have. A basic swamp. I guess I could put that into play. All right, swamp's in play. <laughs> it was weird to see that. It's like, wow, this isn't a deck. There's actually two of these, each basic. Untutorable fun ofs of each basic. One regular, one snow. With the swamp, I can kill Rabble Master next turn and only lose one land instead of two. Oh, they didn't attack. Interesting. Whatever it is they're worried about, I appreciate it. That's just four damage I didn't take. Caves of Chaos Adventure. All right, that's a bunch more damage I am going to take, though. Cave Entrance. Okay, if I draw a two-mana land, I'll try to just survive the turn. If I don't, I might have to Carnosaur and set myself back a land. Okay, all right, let's math this. I think I'm just dead. So it's 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. No, I'm at 2. Okay. Sulfur Vent, go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can send it next turn and just hope I don't hit Battle of Wits. And hope they don't add a second Goblin Rabble Master to the battlefield. The extra Goblin and the extra plus one on the Rabble Master, I think, finishes me off for Xaxes. Or if they can, like, stomp. That would be shitty. Okay. Let's see if I did this math right. Also possible I just didn't. Yeah, I think I'm at 2 with what's on board. Uh, if they follow up with a second... Initiative creature and just go straight into trap, I, I lose. All right, please miss, please miss, please miss. Exiled Ancient Tomb, okay. I mean, relatively okay. It all sucks. I'm at two. And they didn't play a card. They could just, like, Bone Crusher Giant me at some point. All right, uh, nothing to be done here except send it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boarding Party versus Carnosaur. Carnosaur is a bigger body in play. Boarding party has haste. I think trying to get some damage over the bat. And I gotta take my 50-50 here. Please, creative technique. Battle of Wits concede! <laughs> Alright. Uh, I mean, I think I've belabored this point enough, but I honestly think that one Battle of Wits is the correct number to be in this deck. And any more than that, you're actually just fucking up your combo. Because if this deck could go off sooner, like if you could... Go off on turn three often. Maybe Battle of Woods is good enough, but going off on turn four or five, every legacy deck is gonna have you dead on board. And if you don't like hit the battle and an Emrakul, you just don't do anything. Alright, I'm going shaving a battle. I'm cutting my gemstone caverns on the play. And here is something that resembles a deck. This is a very important matchup for Let the Galaxy Burn. Uh, which is the Warhammer card that doesn't exist online or that this deck would play. Okay, a Trickery and a Throws that I can play on turn three. Yeah, I'll keep. Plains Pass is the plan here. My deck is ice cold to Trinisphere. If they don't turn one to Trinisphere, I think I have to play Gemstone Mine and Pass and just hold up Tibalt's Trickery as a counterspell. Oh no. Okay, that's fine. That one's allowed. I can theoretically defeat this one just by racing. And I think the thing I said about being dead to Trinisphere is still true. 
I'm going to play Gemstone Mine. I can Tebalt's Trickery this turn and then Rose of Chaos on my turn and be okay. As long as they don't play an Archon or a, or a three ball this turn. It's got to play around the things that kill you. Second Rebel Master. This is a lot of damage, but I'm going to send it next turn. And I don't want to like Tibalt's Trickery, a non lethal Rebel Master, into a Trinosphere. That's just. Not how I'm gonna, not how I'm gonna go out here. We're gonna go out swinging. There are three trickeries in the deck. You can technically miss on this line, but you have to hit all your trickeries before you find a single creative technique. Rose of Chaos, Violent Outburst. Okay. Well, luckily, that still ends up in the same place. And I'm actually going to counter the Outburst with the Trickery, not the Throws, because I don't want to cast another Throws off of this, because that wastes the Trickery. All right, Big Sphinx, give me a good Cascade here. This is a Niner, a Nine Ball. Sixer, all right, I am 80% to hit a Technique and not a Battle here. Okay, we did it. I am going to demonstrate, because I just want to over completely overpower this opponent. Uh, if they hit a three ball right here, whatever, you deserve it. They hit a Chrome Mox. I don't care about that. They're allowed to cast it right now if they want. I guess they could exile a card and Pyroblast something. But I have boarded out the, the blue card that I care about being destroyed. And look at this board right now. If Let the Galaxy Burn, if I could just cascade into a Pyroclasm somewhere on this chain and pass the turn completely clear, then there's nothing to worry about. I think I'm still going to get away with this one because Creative Technique is going. But not having access to legal magic cards that are optimal for a deck is pretty frustrating. And those of you who don't know, that is a Wizards of the Coast problem, not a Magic Online problem. MTGO is trying. They're out here doing their thing. All right, that's the only battle. That means that I have to end up in more techniques here. Sakashima's protege. I think I probably stopped demonstrating. Do I have enough to win the game here? If I just don't die in combat from my giant creatures... Yeah, I'm not going to demonstrate, because I get to cast at least three more spells this turn. Itali, what's up? Yeah, they're dead. Shatter Skull Smashing and Boarding Party. I'll play the party. Uh, yeah, I'll play Smashing too. Uh, no, I don't think X could be zero. All right. Or it can. All right, we did it. Yeah, it just has no targets. Oh, I can counter this with Tibalt's Trickery. Yeah, I figured it out. Glad I cast that. Uh, is it owner or controller? It's controller. Okay, yeah, yeah. Sick. I'm going to counter the Shatter Skull Smashing. Played perfectly on purpose. Throws of Chaos. There is one Trickery left in the deck here. All right, we can go one more time on this. At some point in my Cascade Chain, battle's not lethal anymore. <laughs> like, I just cast too many spells. But hopefully you win any game where that happens with the cards that you end up with in play. Uh, if they have a Mind Break Trap, they could actually just delete me from existence right now. Trickery, target, throws. MTGO starting to work hard. I can see the gears turning over there. Trepiding Carnosaur. This one actually resolves, resolves. Okay, they don't have Mind Break Trap, or that would have been the moment to do it. If there wasn't one already. Honestly, the Atali was probably the time to do it. I don't think they have Mind Break Trap. And I'm actually out, or no, this is the last creative technique. Okay, this is the end of the chain. And I am not going to demonstrate, because I'm pretty sure I'm going to win. Sweet Gum Recluse. And the Cascade can only hit Throws of Chaos, which I will decline to cast because there's nothing else under it. And then I just have to settle with this. Oh, I can still copy Itali here, actually, and cast more spells this turn. Wait, where'd this technique come from? I thought it was out of those. All right, I'll cast another one. How did this happen? I just lost track of those somewhere. Maybe in my brain I counted the demonstrate as hitting two. All right, now I'm out of these. Ingenuity Engine. Enlisted Worm. 202 cards in my deck. Exactly enough to win with Battle of Wits. That means I can Atali again, too. Atali could still hit Emrakul or another Haste creature and just get the game over over a uh, boarding party maelstrom wanderer wanderer gives your whole squad haste mtgo is working really hard right now because it has to reveal my entire deck and it's not going to find a hit i don't think Let's see 
throws, throws, throws. Okay, uh, I'm going to decline casting the Throws of Chaos. And then I'm going to start resolving my spells. And the Sakashima's protege can send it again on Itali. Big squad. Enigma Sphinx, boarding party can attack this turn. No questions asked. If I copy boarding party, I can actually just make them jump or go to one. I'd rather Itali. What kind of coward? And I'm going to keep the original. The one that can flip into a different creature and is a, a bigger one. Oh, there's my Emrakul. GG, we did it. Emrakul, Magus. I'll cast your Magus, sure. All right. Gotta get the Twitter screenshot for this one. This is turn three. This is the best we've ever done. We did the whole thing. We hit the Emrakul and the battle. Time walk into the battle uh, with exactly 200 cards in the deck. Nothing wasted. Oh, I love that. Let's go. And I believe that strategy is the best one. And I'm going to hit submit. I actually think there's a real argument to putting zero Battle of Wits in the deck because that is, you can't just die if you hit it, as we've seen. And this is a particular matchup where that is of particular concern. But I'm here to play Battle of Wits, so I'm going to leave at least one in. And that was a really good proof of concept game because we did, I don't have double red here. Um, We did, uh, hit the battle somewhere in the chain, and then Emrakul into the time walk turn, which is what you actually want to do. Okay, Meteor Mace is solid. I don't have double red at this time. Emrakul in hand's kind of a brick. I am going to keep... If they moon me, the mace gets the party going, and Ottawara is meaningful interaction. Opponent's on six. And just mountain go. I like that. First time they didn't have a turn one Rabble Master for this whole set. There's my second red if they don't Blood Moon me. And I can set up a Channel Ottawara on tap win if they go three ball. Magus of the Moon, you got it. Now I just have to last until turn six. Simic so Growth Chamber. And if this Magus were to die somehow, it just lets me cheat all these uh, two mana lands into play. Oh, I hate that. Now I need one of my basic islands. Fuck. Uh, that was a this was the correct follow-up for Magus of the Moon, which I didn't actually care about. Two basic islands in the deck. Can I draw one? Is it my time to shine? Uh, I'm going to wish for Yorion and discard Emrakul into my deck. It's better there than it is in my hand. Fable. Disappointing. Yeah, being uh, on basic island or bust. I would be fine with the Trinisphere or the Magus, but not both. I think they're going to get me here. Can't cast this Yorion either. They discarded a Fury. You ever been praying for a two outer and a 231 card deck? Because I am. Uh oh, looks like they have a real thing. All right, yeah, we've lost for sure. Uh, we could be one of these hate pieces, not both. If they don't have the moon, we can auto wear three ball and go off. If they don't have the three ball, we can just go off with Meteor Mace. However, they do have both of those things. And we are. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm at 1. Is there any universe where I can do anything? If I play Pete Bog now and then tap 1, 2, 3, 4, assuming I draw a basic island next turn, I can Ottawa and still only have 4 men available. Yeah, they got me. The double lock piece too much. Okay, this deck is insane. Uh, as we predicted, I actually think the Battle of Wits is uh, bad. Um, I think you want exactly one copy in the deck if you're going to do this at all. If there were some way to accelerate the mana better or get the Cascade going sooner reliably, I think Battle is reasonable. Like If you're regularly putting Battle of Wits into play on turn three, that might be a defensible spot to be, but the creative technique... It's so important to hit and get the chain going. That's the where your resilience comes from. And just doing all this work, sacking all your lands to put a six drop on the stack, and you just go into battle where it could be dazed, forced, you could be dead on board to combat. That's just it came up multiple times where if we hit technique, we probably win, but we hit battle on the first cascade. And I guess in paper you would just cut three of the battles and add four of the let the galaxy burn 
That is a, a legal card there that we don't get here. We didn't play against a single Wasteland in the league, which is very lucky. Uh, we didn't actually get to test how devastating it is to get double Wastelanded when they hit one of your, your Ravnica Bounce Lands. They felt pretty good in the deck in a, in a, a set of games where they were not disrupted in any way. Uh, I mean, you know, there, there's format staples across. They're in some modern decks. Uh, they're the commander staples casual. Uh, they were great in their standard and draft formats. Like, these are really good lands in an environment where your lands aren't getting punished. However, we're in the Wasteland format. And if Moon, if a Moon effect locking down our channel lands is a concern, we could probably just play like a bunch of islands and forests in the deck. Basic island, basic forest. Because like I said, the, the bounce lands don't actually accelerate you. They just hit an extra land drop. You get three lands worth of mana out of two cards which helps when you're on the mulligan. But you become more stable against both Wasteland and Moon. And the small bit of interaction this deck is allowed to play is primarily in the form of Channel Lands. For Viseju, for Ottawara, I think you should probably cut whatever the worst Bounce Land is. I think it's Rot Farm. Because Black just isn't much of a factor in this deck. It's that one Sphinx and there's no other Black card. I would just go more basic Islands and Forests. Give yourself more of a fighting chance, I guess. I mean, it's still slim. You're still a 239 card deck. But that's what I'm thinking. Probably if you do a deep dive, you could find some more sideboard cards. Like, I think Pulverize actually costs six. That's destroy all artifacts, and you can sacrifice two mountains to cast it instead of paying its mana cost. So that's like a way to bust open a board, but then you need more mountains. There's only two mountains in the deck to sacrifice. Yeah, I... I, I don't know. I'm not going to do a Scryfall deep dive and rebuild this deck right now, but I think you need to be super creative with your slots. I think the Battle of Wits is... I think the deck should do it. Like, I'm not saying scrap the whole thing, don't do it, but I think if you want to be Battle of Wits, Mississippi River, only play one, because Mississippi River is more important than Battle of Wits, and you'll get there eventually, if you hit this first. That's my biggest feedback. Okay. If I start thinking about this anymore, I'll never think about anything else for the rest of my life. This has been Charlie's Battle for Mississippi River. Charlie, thank you so much for sending this in. This is the kind of insanity that I encourage on this channel. And I'm so glad we met. I'm so glad you gave me this deck to play. Everyone, thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.